Hey guys, Colorado Dave here. This is Knives in Our Lives. That's my channel here with uh, YouTube, and I also have an Instagram I set up recently. Uh, any support would be appreciated by you guys. Uh, please hit that subscribe button if you would, please, and uh, leave your comments as well if you'd like. I'd be happy to uh, respond. Just learning myself here, so if you got some thoughts, I'm listening. But uh, what I'm trying to do here with you that I've spent some time on recently is with these uh, new Sabenzas that I've gotten from Chris Reeve Knives. Um, I'm newer to the company, uh, but really, really excited. Uh, back in January, let me pull it out here actually real quick. Back in January, I got my first Sabenza, and it was my first experience with the Chris Reeve knife, and that was the large uh, 31 that you see here, Sabenza, and that's done with the natural um, canvas micarta inlays and that has the double lug on it, and that's done in the S35 VN steel. Um, I have changed um, the edge on it. I've actually put my edge on it and taken off the convex edge that came with it. But uh, outside of that, uh, this knife has been in the shop and come back already, um, but this knife is running smooth as can be, like glass, guys. It's running great. Um, for another video, for another time, we'll talk more about this knife. But uh, great, great, great knife. Just got it back. Excited to have it back in hand. Anyway, um, when that knife was gone, I decided I was going to pull the trigger and get this uh, Sabenza 31 small. Uh, reason being is most of my uh, family and business is between Chicago and Denver markets. And the knife laws are kind of strict. In Denver, not so bad. I think it's like a three inch in uh, the metropolitan area as far as your blade length. And in Chicago, it's like two and a half. But if you're in the suburbs, it's three inches. And most of my family's out in the suburbs. So I can carry this knife here because this is just under three inches long. So that was the reason for wanting to pull the trigger to get another uh, uh, Chris Reeve knife. Uh, the Sabenza 31 small made more sense just for an everyday carry because uh, it was legal in more places that I was visiting. So. That was my thinking behind it. With the other one going in the shop, I decided I was gonna pull this one out and uh, pull the trigger and uh, get it. The other reason I uh, got really, really excited about this knife was um, that it's the first one that I saw like it on the market um, with the uh, S45VN steel on the blade. Um, they're switching that over to all the Sapenzas and all the knives with Chris Reeve knives eventually. Um, it's all going to switch over to S45VN, but they're uh, just getting ready to start, and they've just, uh, they're just they just firing up the uh, Sabenzas with the S45VN. And this is the first one I've seen on the market. Uh, I picked it up immediately and uh, got it. Um, after I got it, I did have a few initial issues, um, which I will get into as I get into the review on this knife, because we are going to do a full review on this today. Um, and I did have to send it into the shop, so I sent it in uh, after I sent my large in and they came back together. Um, but they had done quite a bit to this knife. And uh, the biggest thing is, is that we uh, discovered that the actual blade steel on this was S35VN and not S45VN, uh, like the box and the birth date had set on it. So that was kind of interesting. But again, Chris Reeves handled it like a champ. Uh, they fixed it, um, put the right blade on there, and did a few other things to the knife because uh, it was having some issues. It did come out with some initial issues, but uh, again, I'll get more into that when I get into the review. Um, but now it's just, it's, it's perfect EDC. It is just, this is a great, great example of one. I don't know if it's because it just came back, but this, I've played with it quite a bit as far as just opening and closing it. and. It's so smooth. It's really, really, I mean, if hydraulic, I know is the word that gets used a lot and definitely it has that feel, but I would say even more than that, it's glassy. It's just, it's really, really, really nice. There's no friction whatsoever on the knife uh, between the blade and the frame of the knife, et cetera. So it's just really, really nice feeling. Uh, very, very satisfying. But uh, that is the um, S45 VN steel on that. This also has a double lug to it, and this has the uh, micarta inlays as well, but on this one, it has the black micarta inlays, and uh, I was very stoked on those as well because I really liked them on the large, um, and so I knew I wanted them again on the small. That was important to me, so that I was able to get those. I was able to get the double lugs. That was also very important to me, 
and uh, it was a bonus getting the S45 VN steel. Um, I just happened to run across it and just grabbed it right away. So it was just uh, one of those fluke things. But uh, anyway, um, let's get into the review here a little bit. I do want to do a full review on this knife. I really haven't carried it that much, so I should probably wait a little bit. But I'm going to do a full first impression slash review, and then I'll probably still do something down the road later with you guys. But uh, I, want to, I really wanted to get something out right away because I don't think there is many reviews on it with the S45 VN steel. I have used it a little bit, um, not a lot yet, but a little bit. So we'll talk about that. Um, but I just want to get into the knife a little bit. So let me uh, first start out with a spec sheet. I don't really like talking about specs, so I'm going to put a sheet out there. I see some of you other guys doing this, and I liked it. So I'm kind of taking the idea and running with it. Hopefully you can see it all there. And that is the specs on the knife. Um, I just pulled this off of Blade HQ. The biggest thing you're going to notice is on the steel, I had to change it by hand to the S45VN because that is brand new. Um, that is brand new to the uh, market um, as they are just starting to switch them over. So that's why I was excited to get this out right away. Um, again, this is the small Sebenza by uh, Chris Reeve Knives. This is the 31. Um, and again, this is done with the S45VN steel. And this has the uh, inlays with the uh, black micarta and this has the double lugs on it as well and this is just a beautiful knife that i have fallen in love with very 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 quickly um, i'll tell you that for beginners right now there's no secret if you want to click off the video that's fine but i'm telling you this is a beautiful knife i'm going to be telling you a lot more about it as i really really do like it um, the action is just velvety smooth um love it um the feel in the hand i consider myself to have large hands a little bit on the skinny side but definitely large hands and as small as this knife was when i opened the box because this was my second uh sabenza 31 my first was a large i was kind of surprised how much smaller it was to be honest i really was i was surprised and uh so i was kind of set off a little bit like you know a little bit wondering like wow this is uh like half the knife <laughs> and it was just it just it took me a while to get used to it but then I started playing with it and fidgeting with it and I realized right away it's about the quality of that action and the quality of those tolerances and just the materials and you know just how precise everything's done on this knife and it just it's something special I, I can't explain it my whole my whole knife I'm a knife enthusiast I don't consider myself a collector but uh, definitely an enthusiast and I have touched a lot of knives and there's quite a few that have gone through my hands. And I can tell you that I'm breaking my collection down over the last few months since I got my first Sebenza and I've started to sell it off. More recently here in the last few weeks, I've sold like six knives of my collection and it's just so I can get another Sebenza. You know, I really want to get a, uh, I really want to go into another Sebenza after, you know, having these two uh, 31s. I, I got a couple thoughts on where I'm going, but I don't want to share that with you yet. But uh, but I will be getting another one at some point, as I just think it's a great company. And I went through some hurdles with these guys in the beginning and a little bit of a roller coaster ride with having some issues when I first got my knives. But um, wow, did they stand behind them and make it right and still make me want to be a part of the company and, and buy another knife from them, you know, down the road. So anyway. Getting on with the review, you saw the main specs on the knife. The overall length of it's, you know, just under seven inches. It's like 6.87 inches. Um, the blade length is just under three inches, so it makes it very carryable just about everywhere. I think they're calling it 2.94 at Blade HQ, which is where I pulled those specs from. Um, cutting edge, they're saying three inches. Um, again, this is Blade HQ saying this, not me. Uh, the blade material on this is uh, S45VN. First of its kind that I've seen in the marketplace, they are coming. Um, as I understand it, they are going to release it on the small Sebenzas first, uh, the 31s, and then they're going to release it on the large 31 Sebenzas as they still have a little bit of inventory on the large blades, as I understand it. So um, as far as a hardness on this one, it's, uh, it's going to be, instead of being 59 to like 60 or 58 to 60, which is what it is on the S35VN, which Chris Reeve has been using for a long, long time, um it's actually going to be 60 to 62 rockwell hardness on it so it will be a little bit harder steel um it's going to be very similar to the s35 vn but just with a little bit maybe on steroids a little bit but uh it's just got a little boost to it you know maybe a little vitamin b12 i don't know but uh but it's very very similar steel from what i understand i haven't worked with it much i've only really had the knife i've had it for almost two months now 
but uh, I've only had it in hand for about two weeks. And that's because I got it, I played with it for a week, I had to send it in the shop, I got it back, and I've had it for about a week. So, so I haven't spent that much time with it. But again, I wanted to get an initial review out there on it so you guys had something to look at. Um, again, I am Knives uh, In Your Lives, that's the name of my channel. Please do subscribe, I'm new out there, but I haven't put in a lot of uh, videos out there, a lot of Chris Reeve videos. So if you like Chris Reeve Knives and you wanna get notified, please do check in. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited about these knives. And uh, getting back to this uh, Sebenza 31 Small, um, the blade style is a uh, drop point. I don't think they're doing any other style yet on the uh, 31s, but drop point. Um, for me, that's my ideal choice in the, uh, in the actual blade. I love the blade shape. I like the point on it. Um, I like the bigger belly that it has. Um, the Insingo's nice too. Um, I may try one of those at some point down the road, but I really, really like the drop point. And uh, that's what I had on my large Sebenza, and that's what I wanted on this one as well. There was no question that uh, even if they offered a Tanto or Tanto, whatever you want to say, or a different style, I would have gone with the uh, drop point, as I just, I like it. I like it a lot. The black uh, micarta inlays, uh, it was important for me to get the inlays again. Um, I would have gone with natural or black. I, I guess when I, I did have the option of both, um, the double lugs were only on the black one, so that's the reason I went with the black one, but also I kind of wanted the black just as an offset to the uh, the other one I had that was considered natural. The other thing I want you to notice in the, uh, we may as well go ahead and talk about it now, but if you want to take a look real close, I'm not bring it closer up, but if you look at the inlays, they're very different than what you saw on the first run of these knives. Um, the first run of these knives, the inlays, I want to put this up here real quick. If you see how that's got kind of a, corkscrew kind of look to it or pattern to it if you look at that it has kind of that you know round curly pattern to it um if you look at this knife it doesn't really have that but the first run of these black ones did have that um from what i understand they did make a little bit of a change in the micarta and this run of micarta is running a little bit different and i do believe that they're going to keep running with this one and you're going to see more of it from what i understand the uh the corkscrew or the curly looking one, uh, they were having some issues with consistency. So that's part of the reason they were switching over to this as I understand it. But uh, again, don't hold me to it. That's uh, just a little insight I have. But uh, that's what it looks like there. That's what the back looks like. But I mean, it's beautiful. I like it because it's very black. Some of my saw with the uh, other pattern had a tendency to be a little bit more gray and white, a lot lighter. Um, with me not carrying this a whole lot yet, it's, it's already got a real nice blackness to it, and I think it's just gonna darken up even a little more and look that much nicer um, as it breaks in. But I like that a lot. Um, this is the, uh, since I have it up close to the camera here, that's the blade. Um, that is the factory edge on it. Uh, that is the S45VN. Uh, as far as understanding where that's stamped and how you can tell the difference between the S35 and the S45VN, as I understand it, actually I know firsthand from looking at it, is when you take the knife apart, um, just, you know, again, pop the pivot screw right here. Um, it'll come out on both sides. You can just yank the knife out. Um, if you take the washer out on the uh, show side, right underneath the washer, you're gonna notice that it's gonna say a 35 or a 45 based on which type of steel it is. Uh, mine does say 45 underneath it for S45VN. And uh, that's pretty cool. So uh, I'm excited to really work with this steel a little bit. And uh, I do wanna put my edge on it. I've been playing with this edge for a couple of weeks now. I like it, it's okay, but I don't love it. Um, I wanna put my edge on it because I will put a KME edge on there that's gonna be a little bit sharper. I'm gonna make the angle just a little bit steeper and maybe take it down to like a 17 degree or something like that. And, uh, and then I wanna really, really, you know, mirror it up because I think it really adds to the look of the knife, which is what I did with my large. I'll show that to you real quick, actually. Let me show that to you. But I like to mirror up the edge, um, and it just gets really slicey when you do that. Let's see, I don't know if you can see that very well or not, but hopefully you can catch that on the camera. Um, but it's got a really, really nice mirror edge to it, and, uh, and it's really slicey. That's what I wanna do to the small one here as well. So I just haven't had a chance to do it yet, but I'm gonna do it sooner than later, no question. Um, we may as well talk about this lanyard now since we're looking at the uh, inlays and whatnot on the, uh, on the actual um, knife uh, handle itself, the scale itself. Um, but right here, if you notice on my large one, again, I'm gonna bring it back for one minute. If you notice right there on the large one, 
that is where the pin is. And that's the pin for the uh, lanyard. So that's, and then there's a lanyard hole that goes through that pin. Let me see if I can find it on this knife real quick. If you can see it right there. There's like a hole right there with the lanyard and that's the, uh, that's the lanyard pin. I took it out of this knife. So that's why you're seeing that empty hole with nothing because it goes right there and I took it out. Um, the reason I took it out, I took the lanyard off. I kept it on there when I first had the knife just because it was brand new and you know, it came with it. And after it came back from the shop when they did a few things to it, um, they had put a new lanyard on there. So I kept it on there for a few days. And then the second I cut it off, I realized that the knife had a real strong shake to it. If I'd shake the knife, you could actually hear the pin just rattle back there. And I didn't like it. And I've heard that from other people, but I didn't really notice it that much on my large one that it bothered me enough that I had to take it out right away. But I noticed it on this knife immediately. It made the knife feel cheap, you know, and I'd be holding it or I'd be grabbing it to open it or do whatever I'm doing with it. Um, I would hear that pin like rattle in the back and it really made it feel just like cheap metal and I didn't like it at all. So I took it apart. I also wanted to see that stamp that said S45VN. So I took it apart and I took that pin out. So that's why it doesn't have the lanyard pin in there. Um, I guess from what I understand, Chris Reeve Knives does recommend that you just pull that pin out if you are gonna take the lanyard out so you don't have that issue as they are aware of it. Um, I do know there's other YouTubers out there that I've, I've watched that have actually taken the uh, pin and glued it on one side, like super glued it on one side. And uh, that's held it in place and yet it stays in the knife frame, which is kind of a nice idea as well. I may do that down the road. I haven't yet, but that's something I'll look at doing down the road. Um, but anyway, so that's what uh, I think the scales are all about. Um, we'll talk about the clip, I guess, here, since we're still on the handle. Um, first, the simplicity of taking this thing apart, since I've started to touch on it a little bit. There's really only three screws, one, two, three. Here you have your pivot, here you got your uh, stop pin, and here you have your, uh, what they call the back, uh, or, you know, your back pin, if you want to call it that, but basically the back of the knife, okay? You just basically have to pop all three of those screws. They do recommend, from what I understand, I am a newer Chris Reeve owner, uh, so I, I hate to bastardize this, I hate to say it wrong, but hopefully I get it right. Um, you are supposed to leave these screwed in, unscrew the pivot first, yank the blade out like so. After you take the blade out, then you can unscrew the uh, frame screws and then you can pop off the frame. Um, I, that is how I do it. Um, that is how I've done it. I've taken my large one apart twice. I've taken this apart once. I by no means am an expert. Um, I am going to take it apart on camera next time just so you guys can see how I do it. Um, but that's how I understand it. It worked fine for me. I basically cleaned everything with a little rubbing alcohol. I took uh, some lube and I just lubed it back up on the uh, washers and everything and I put it back together. There really wasn't a whole lot to it, but I will do it on camera next time I do it. Um, so that's what the uh, lanyard pin was about. That's what the uh, frame of the knife's about. Let's talk here a little bit about the, um, the clip. Okay, the clip is weird because when I got the clip on my large one, when I first got the knife, I did not like the clip at all. I was kind of an anti, I'm like, there's all these people saying this is like the best clip they've ever worn. And man, the Chris Reeve clip is awesome. And I didn't get it. I thought it was too tight, you know, like really tight. And uh, I wasn't a huge fan. I did stretch it just lightly, not a lot, just lightly like that by lifting it up a little bit. And uh, I just, from using it in my pocket a little bit, this one's still breaking in. It's not there hundred percent yet, but like my large one, it slides in and out pretty nice now. And I actually do really like the clip, but I have learned to really like it. But again, initially I was not a huge fan. It's kind of tight. You have to break it in a little bit. Just be aware of that. Um, for those of you that didn't know, it is uh, Idaho made. So it is a USA product and it is made out of Boise, Idaho. And uh, you can see the inlay here on the back as well, which is nice. It really, really is nice. Um, I think it lifts your finger up, your thumb a little bit too from the clip so that it's, you don't catch on it quite as much. I think it helps a little bit. Um, the one thing, if I'm gonna say anything negative about this knife that I'm kind of questioning is this clip, um, is, is the way that it, you got this rise on the end of the clip. I do think it's a little bit sharp. I wish it was more rounded or I wish it was just more of a ramp going up, not just this such a steep angle going up like this because I do have a tendency to catch my thumb on it a little bit. So for me that way, if I were to say anything negative, and this is so, so minor, because I do love this knife, um, I, would, I, would make, I would comment on that clip a little bit. But uh, again, nothing of any major importance whatsoever. Um, I have talked about on one of my Sabenzas, at some point I would like to get a Hawk clip just to try it, because they do look pretty cool. 
and I would like to put a hot clip on one of them just to uh, see if I like that style clip because it's where you basically get to press the clip on the end here and it makes it easier to put in and out of your pocket. But more than anything, it's a good looking clip. It's just kind of sharp looking as it's more of a uh, milled titanium uh, kind of look. So it's a little more finished looking, but uh, anyway, I'm fine with this clip though. It's absolutely does not need to be changed in any way whatsoever. Um, I'm definitely content with it. Um, so that's what's going on basically with the, uh, the frame or the uh, handle of the knife. Um, what I like on the jimping here is the jimping is kind of smooth. I mean, it's not, I mean, it's, you get plenty of texture, but it's not digging into you, which I like. So the, te so I think the jimping is awesome. I think it's really, really well done on this knife. Um, if you look at the spine of this knife, um, see how, how it's crowned all the way down and then how wide it stays all the way down to the tip until it gets to the very, very end of that tip. It's just a, one of the most beautiful spines I've seen on any knife anywhere that I've ever touched. Um, and, and it's all these little details that make Chris Reeve knives something special. And this is definitely one of those details when you look at the spine of this knife. Um, I did get the double lugs, as I told you, that was important to me and I'm really happy I did because it makes it a little bit more fidgety. Um, but if you look at the tip of that, let me see, hopefully that's on camera, right? But if you, you can see the tip of that really well, it's just, it really comes down to a nice tip. It really comes down to a nice tip, but it's really thick. It's not going anywhere. Um, that blade stock is plenty thick, plenty, plenty thick. So, and I love the crowning of the spine. It makes it really, really smooth if you do get up here on the knife. Um, I'm telling you, this is so glassy. The action is phenomenal. It is phenomenal. Speaking of the action, let's just get into the action now. Actually, before I get past the blade, let's talk a little bit more about it. Um, I want to talk about the grind a little bit here because this is a beautiful hollow grind. And I don't have a ton of knives with the hollow grind on it. And uh, this knife, because of the way that it's ground, it kind of, it, it swoops in like this. Okay, so that's what makes it a hollow grind on both sides. So it makes it very, very narrow. So if I put this down, it's going to swoop in on both sides. But then it swoops back out a little bit too because it has what's called a convex edge on it. So the edge is a little bit rounded. So it comes back out for the edge to do this little round tip here so that it has a real, it has a lot, a little bit more body to the tip. So it gives it a lot more strength. And so you can basically strap that tip for a period of time and really keep that edge for a really long time. Even with the S35VN steel, it'll give you unbelievable edge retention because you just have to get a, a strapping without a full um, sharpening and it'll stay for quite a long time. So that's one of the things that a lot of people really, really like about the knife. Now with this one being the S45, it has even higher edge retention. Um, again, for me, I want something that's crazy, slicey, sharp. That's just me. So I am gonna put an edge on this sooner than later. Um, I've learned how to sharpen with a KME system. I had a belt system before that, and then I used to do it with stones before that. And I still use the stones for my uh, cooking knives. But uh, what I will tell you is that uh, I've really fallen in love with this KME system. And I do have quite a few stones. And so I put my knives like this, my better knives through, I'll put them through six or eight stones, maybe even 10 stones if I include my film, because I'll be doing some uh, lapping film as well to take this all the way down to a really, really uh, high micron. Um, but basically what I mean by all that, it sounds all fancy and everything, but I'm basically just taking a real strong grit of, um, of a diamond stone. And then I'm just slowly bringing it back to a really, really fine grit to where it puts a really, really nice mirror finish on the edge. And in the process of doing that, I'm changing the angle a little bit. And I am going from this convex, as I had told you, with this rounded tip that you're gonna get from a Chris Reeve knives um, and to a knife that's gonna be more like this and it's gonna go back out flat. And what I'm doing to do that is, is I'm doing it at an angle and I'm gonna do it at like a 17 degree angle all the way around that edge consistently. And so it will, you are basically reshaping that tip a little bit, that edge, the tip of the edge, or I should say the edge of the blade, excuse me, not the tip, but the edge of the blade. Um, you are reshaping that a little bit. In doing so, you're gonna end up with a finish like this, as you can see on this knife, um, which I love. I just think it's beautiful. And that's one of the reasons I wanna do it. I like the look aesthetically. But in addition to that, and with the other thing you're gonna to notice too, is you're gonna notice that uh, bevel on that knife is all the way around is, is even, which just shows what a beautiful grind that Chris Reeve knives does. Um, see the other side, it's a little dirty. I didn't clean this knife up. I wasn't planning on showing it this much, but hopefully you're seeing some of this. 
the camera and I'm doing it justice. But anyway, let me put that down. Enough of that. But I will sharpen this sooner than later. It will be slicey. I promise you that. It'll be very, very, very slicey. So right now out of the box, I wasn't crazy impressed with the sharpness of the knife, if you want me to tell you the truth. It was okay. It was fine. I don't mind because I, I put my edge on it sooner than later anyway. But if you're looking to use the factory edge for a long period of time, I wouldn't say that this was the best example. I would say my large was a better example than this one. Um, but again, that hollow grind, I love because it really makes the knife get really, really thin. And what that's doing is when it comes in real thin like that, you're basically, the more you sharpen it, you're coming into that thinner and thinner blade. So it's just gonna accent that, you know, sliciness of the blade, which, you know, is, is pretty cool because a lot of knife makers aren't using that grind anymore, uh, the hollow grind, and, uh, and I like it, I like it. It's just a nice change of pace versus some of my other knives. But uh, anyway, so the blade I love. I mean, I, the other thing to notice on the blade is the uh, stone wash. Um, a couple other blades that I really liked that I looked at and I, I got close to buying was the uh, the knife like this, the, the 21 instead of a 31. I thought about getting the small and a 21 and I was going to get the bog oak. Um, but the thing I didn't like about it was it had the satin finish on the blade. And I love this stone wash finish because it really does hide scratches and it really does make it more of a user uh, friendly um, finish where it doesn't show any fingerprints, anything like that. It doesn't also have the uh, shininess on the actual frame of the, of the handle and all that. So for me, it's a no brainer. I want the stone wash. I, I need the stone wash um, because uh, it makes it more of a user for me and I like to use my knives. So that was my thinking behind that, but I wanted to show you that as well. I did have the option when I changed the lugs on this, um, to go with the blue or the gold or with the uh, silver. I wanted the silver because I just liked the way it matched up. Unless I was gonna change all the screws and everything over, I just, I thought the silver worked the best. Also, um, I think that on the thumb studs, the coloring doesn't last that long. It does wear pretty quickly. So just FYI on that. But uh, as far as the edge too, it is considered a plain edge. There's no serration on that edge. So it is a plain edge all the way through. Um, as far as the handle length, they call it just under four inches. They're saying it's like 3.94 inches. Um, the thickness of the handle is gonna be just under half an inch. I think it's like 0.48. Um, the color, as I told you, it's the black uh, inlays um, with the uh, micarta. Um, this is a right-handed knife. One thing that's unique about Chris Reeve knives is uh, they do have a lot of left-handed knives as well. They offer most of their knives in left-handed versions. So uh, if you are a lefty, um, it does make it user-friendly for them as well. So this is a right-handed version. Um, the pocket clip is tip up, if you didn't notice when I was showing that to you earlier, but okay, the tip goes like so. So you can see it's the tip up pocket clip. Um, this is what you got there. This is considered a frame lock knife. Um, let's talk a little bit about the locking system here. Um, this is like a, um, like Chris Reeve is really the one who invented the uh, integral, integral, um, lock and what this what what he has here is this ceramic uh version of this is he's got a ceramic ball this is what i'm rattling and i'm kind of popping all over the place let's start over here okay what he's doing that makes this different from the sabenza 21 this being the sabenza 31 is they made a big change in the locking mechanism and what i mean by that is if you look at the actual lock bar which is right here okay and then you look at the actual tang of the knife which is here Okay, and then you got the blade of the knife here, right? Okay, so where this actual frame lock butts up against the tang of the knife. On the 21, the tang of the knife butts directly up against the titanium of the frame lock. Okay, what makes this knife different is that there's actually, and we're gonna try to show it to you here real quick, there's actually a little ball about halfway in the middle of where that frame lock is, okay, where it's cut out right there. About halfway in the middle, there's a little ball, and it goes just beyond that line of where that cutoff is. So it sticks out a little bit. So you have a little piece. You have a little piece of it sticking out like this, and the rest of the ball is inside inside that frame lock. Okay, so it's inside here. So only a little piece of it, less than half of it sticking out. Okay, that's actually what is touching the tang of the blade. And that is a ceramic ball, which is actually tougher than the titanium. And so it'll actually last longer because it's going to wear better. But that's the biggest change between the 21 and the 31 uh, Sabenza. And this being a 31, it has that new technology. 
And a lot of you know this already, so I don't think I'm telling you anything, but I wanna make sure that those who don't do understand that. And if you try like the Incozy, uh, that has the same lock system. It, they've already switched over to this system as well. And that really started off with the uh, Sabenza 25, which then eventually became the Incozy. And they, have, they all have that technology with the ceramic ball, like the Sabenza 31, okay? The Umnumzum, if I'm saying that right, hopefully, guys, um, that one has this technology as well. And I love it because if you listen to the knife, it just has this beautiful sound for one, and it pops just right into place. Um, hold on, I didn't do it that loud that time, but sometimes it pops really loud. Yeah, of course, it's not doing it now that I'm on camera, but anyway... Um, the other thing is there's no double detent because of the ceramic ball. There's basically like a ramp that starts to build in, in the actual blade. So like when you turn the blade down this way and you look at the lock right here, if you can see right here where it's hitting, where it's hitting the tang of the blade right there, that ramp, that's the ramp for the ceramic ball. That's basically kind of just making its own little groove and it's getting more and more smooth as you break the knife in. So there is no double detent. There's just that one ramp that kind of rides the ceramic ball right into place. And so it's super glassy and smooth and you feel no sense of that double click that you even get on the 21. Even though it's a beautiful feel and it's a beautiful knife, it is different than this. And that's the trade-off you're getting with the 31 is that you will get that extra smoothness out of it. Um, on the negative side, some people, because of that, because you have this ceramic ball as so, and because you have this flatness here of the, um, if you can see that, because of the flatness here, you have the round ball here, you have the flatness here of the, um, this, is, this is your ceramic ball, this is the tang of your blade, you are gonna get a little, potentially, you are gonna get a little bit of rock flex with the 31 that you didn't necessarily get from the 21. Because the 21 had a bigger surface that was basically, which is the whole titanium frame lock, which is basically going up, which is butting up against that um, tang of the blade. And so it leaves a much bigger surface. So there's a little bit less play, if that makes sense. So the difference in that and the ceramic ball is, is going to be a little bit noticeable. So technically, they're saying on a few of the knives, some people are getting a little bit of downward play on that, which they're calling lock flex, which is very acceptable and it's not going to hurt anything. It's just the physics of the knife. And it's the physics of the ceramic ball being in there and a blade sitting on it that it may have a little bit of flex back and forth. So just to understand that with this knife, it's going to feel a little bit different than the 21 that way. Um, I've learned a lot about this is I did have some bigger issues with my knife that it went into the shop for. I don't want to get into that in this review today, but uh, if you want to look at some of my other videos, I do have one um, questioning some of the things I had to have done on the knife. Um, but, uh, but I did have to have a few things done on this knife and it really taught me a lot about the technology and it just made me love the knife that much more when the day was done. I will tell you that if you do have any issues, Chris Reef knives will stand behind it and they were, uh, they were awesome. Um, I'm a fanboy. I was happy with uh, the way they handled it. I'm happy with the way that they took care of me, the, the way they fixed the knife. Um, I was lucky enough to even have Tim Reeve call me himself and because I had two knives in the shop at the same time and just uh, basically apologize and, and say, hey, you know, I just want to make sure you understand uh, what we did to your knives and that they're okay. And, uh, you know, that's right from the top. So, you know, that's pretty stand up. Um, great company, uh, great people. I'm newer to them. This is only my second uh, Chris Reeve knives and uh, I love it. Uh, I love it. I couldn't be happier with the action. I can tell you it has changed the way that I handle my knives. I mean, I will be getting rid of quite a few of my knives because I'm finding myself carrying these knives a lot. And in doing so, my other knives are just sitting there. And so I'm probably going to end up letting some go. I've already let like four or five go just over the last week or two. And that's because I'm trying to get another Chris Reeve knife. <laughs> and... Uh, so that's, that's kind of where I'm at. So I've definitely turned into a huge fanboy and uh, maybe a little out of control, but uh, do, do love the knife. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to sharing more about the S45 VN steel with you guys. It's, I haven't used it a lot. And like I said, the edge is just so-so at this point. I've just cut some paper and a little bit of cardboard. And don't get me wrong, it went right through it and it was great. But, uh, but I think I can really get more out of the edge. So we'll work on that. One thing I did want to do as a comparison, too, I don't think I showed you guys any other knives. Let's just put a couple knives out there that are somewhat similar in size and see where we go with it. 
Okay, this is the uh, QSP Penguin. Some of these knives are a little bit dirty because they do get used. Um, this is probably a pretty good matchup. It's almost identical in size. That's why I pulled it out. Um, this has the uh, denim uh, micarta, uh, what am I trying to say? Not inlays, but uh, but scales, which is which I really, really do like. And this is this is like a $30 knife, guys, but it's a great little, great little fun knife. I do use it quite a bit because uh, I don't mind uh, beating it up. This right here is the uh, Rhea, and this is from uh, CJRB. And this is another one that I thought size-wise matched up really nicely to compare to the uh, small Sabenza 31. If you look at it again, it's almost identical in size and cutting edge and all that. This has a little bit bigger belly to it, it looks like, but uh, they both have that same pointy kind of feel. They have that gentleman knife kind of feel. These are probably two good knives to compare, but uh, obviously there's a big price difference. Is this is a uh, like $35 knife, I think, $40 knife, something like that. Um, I do like it in the jade, though. I just think it's, it's, it's an awesome little knife. I really do like it. But uh, anyway, another one that fits pretty good size-wise and is a good one to compare. This was probably my number one user last year. Uh, this is the Para 3. Uh, this one is with the gray uh, G10 scales, and it's uh, the Maximate. And this is my heaviest carried knife of last year. So this is a great comparison for me because I just love this knife, and now I love this knife. So... Um, Unfortunately, this knife is taking away from the pocket time on this one as I'm just, you know, really trying to break this in and I'm really excited about spending time with it. But uh, but I still love my Maximate uh, Pair 3. And you can see, again, size-wise, the blades are very similar in size. I would say that the uh, Chris Reeve uh, Sabenz is a little bit longer. You got a little bit more cutting edge because of the uh, forward choil, finger choil that you have here on the Pair 3. It takes away from the blade a little bit. But... Uh, Again, one thing that's nice about the Chris Reeve knife as well is they really do give you a nice uh, area there. I wouldn't really call it a choil, but where they cut it out so that when you sharpen the knife, you have plenty of room to uh, to bring that edge up and uh, and it'll look really nice as as you, as you continue to sharpen the knife. It's going to continue. The blade's going to look really nice still shape wise, which I like a lot. But that's the pair of three. We'll put a bigger knife up against it, the pair of two, just because a lot of people understand the size of that. Um, obviously, it's a bigger knife. Um, if I line up the pivots, uh, you can tell it's more blade, it's more handle, it's more everything. Um, it's just a bigger knife. It's also blockier. It's also a little bit taller. Um, where the Sabenza, keep in mind too, it's not very uh, thick. You know, the actual width of it, it's pretty, th you know, the actual frame, it's not that thick for being a titanium frame knife. This has a little bit more thickness to it because of the inlays, but uh, but overall, I'd still consider it a pretty thin knife. Um this does flick out, by the way. Um, I'm not one to flick much, but this actually, you can see how comfortable and natural that is. I mean, just the, the action on this thing is just awesome. It's really, really smooth. Um, like I said, pretty much out of the box because I've only used it for a few weeks. But uh, anyway, what else do I want to put up against it? Let's look at, uh, this is another knife I've really spent some time with this summer a little bit. When these knives were both in the shop, this was uh, a knife between this and my pair of three that I was spending the most time with. Um, this one I babied a little bit. The pair of three I can go ahead and beat things up with because it's a keeper and I've used it for a long time. This one still has some collect. I might, you know, sell it off just because it's got some collector value to it. Um, but on the other hand, I'm very much falling in love with the knife and I may just make it another user. So, But this is the uh, Benchmade Osborne 940 and this happens to be the uh, Blade HQ exclusive with the uh, M4 steel in the blade, which I love M4. And uh, it's got the jade handles. But another beautiful knife. You can tell it's a bigger knife than the Sabenza as well. It's more blade. It's more handle. It's more everything. As far as though the width of the knife, like in your pocket and stuff like that, it, it, it's very similar to the uh, to the Osborne and uh, the 940. So there are some similarities that way as far as how it feels in pocket for a carry. But uh, but another great knife. Uh, I'll do one more that's kind of a bigger knife, but just to give you a bigger comparison, uh, this is another knife that I love to carry. Um, one of my favorites, uh, this is my ZT um, 0562, and this is the titanium version, so they say TI, and this is a Rick Hinder design um, with just fantastic action, but you can tell it just kind of dwarfs the, the Sabenza 31. It's a much bigger knife. It's about a three and a half inch blade versus just under three inches on the Sabenza, uh, but this to me is like a standard, I like big knives, so to me, I got quite a few knives in this size, size range. Um, that's got my edge on it as well. I do use this knife. This one's definitely a user, but this one has just awesome flipper action for a flipper knife. But it's a bigger knife. It's not the it's not the same thing. 
And then we'll put it up against the large Sabenza just so we can uh, look at the two of those together. And you can see the difference there, but you've probably seen that on other videos quite a bit. Um, I've heard some people out there say that it'd be nice to have a medium Sabenza. I would agree. I think a medium size, like a three and a quarter inch blade with just a little bit more handle to it would be pretty awesome. Um, I'd be all in on one. I think it'd be pretty cool. Um, we'll see if they ever come out with one, but uh, yeah, I'd definitely love to see one and I'd love to see it in a drop point blade because I really like that hollow grind drop point blade. Um, and I would love to put it in my collection with these other two. So um, as both of these are users, both there's no ifs, ands, or buts that these are users. This one, the action's even smoother than my new one because it's I've had it for a few months. That was horrible, but this one flips out really nice too. Um, if you want to flip it out and do that. Again, I do that more for show. When I'm playing with it by myself, I'm kind of old school. I have a tendency to do it old school style, but uh, but I do flip it on camera just because I think it looks cool and, and everybody wants to be able to flip it. So, so I learned how just because. But uh, anyway, we'll put that away. But getting back to this small one, um, what else do we want to talk about on this knife? Um, as far as an everyday carry, I think it's awesome because it meets the state laws in a lot of states and a lot of places because it is an under three inch blade. Um, it's kind of still struggling in California. I know downtown Chicago, it has issues, but there's a most of, most of the country you can carry this knife. And uh, that, that's one of the beauties of it. And one of the things that's surprising about it is just, you know, like I said, I have large hands. Your finger, I mean, your index finger just fits perfect, like right in that first groove. It just fits perfect. Um, really, really nice. And then you got that jimping right there to hold it solid. I don't know. I can't explain it, but it just, for a small knife, because it felt really small when I pulled it out of the box, it really is fulfilling in the hand. And, uh, and I do love it. So anyway. That's uh, where I'm at on that. Um, I just heard my doorbell ring, so I got distracted. Guys, I apologize. Um, I'm hoping I don't have to answer it. My son's going to answer it, so we'll see. Um, we're going to keep going with this video for now as I'm almost done with it, and I do want to finish, and I don't want to keep you guys hanging much longer. I don't really think I have that much more to say about it at this time. Um, hopefully, you got a better feel for the knife. I will tell you that a lot of people have talked about that pivot bushing, and they've talked about the uh, stop pin and having issues with it on this specific knife. I have not, I took it into the shop initially, I had some issues, it came back. Uh, any issues I had, they fixed, and the knife is running beautifully. And I've been very, very happy with, uh, with the quality of uh, the workmanship and uh, the fact that the pins are staying in tight, there's no vibration, nothing's loosening up, um, nothing like that. So the pins are screwed all the way down tight. I have no play on the blade side to side. Um, like I said, as far as that little bit of lock flex on this one, I have maybe just a ever so little bit touch, but not much really, if any. And inside the side plate, there's like nothing. Um, so this knife's just tight as can be. And uh, I'm very happy and satisfied with it. So, so that's pretty cool. Um, but anyway, I think that's all I have for now. I think one of the things that makes this knife really, really, really special, and I heard one reviewer, and I don't think it was a bigger reviewer. It might've been one of the smaller guys, because I follow everybody on the, when I watch YouTube and I get a new knife, I try to see all the videos I can on that knife. And uh, I think it was one of the smaller guys mentioned to me, he said, you know what the best thing about this knife is? And he talked about right here where it's scalloped out for you to open up the lock, the frame lock, and put the knife away. Just how you have that nice big area to put your finger in there. And you know what? The more I thought about that, he's right. 100% he's right. It is just so smooth and it's so easy on the thumb and it doesn't hurt at all. Where a lot of these uh, frame locks, sometimes they don't leave you enough space to get your finger in there and it can be really tough to uh, close the knife. But on this one, it's just really, really pleasant experience. And then if you notice here, they even cut it out a little bit here to make it a little bit softer on your finger on the inside as well. So that's something I've just been very happy with. Just a little details like that is what makes uh, Chris Reeve knives something really, really, really special. And as you can tell here, they're just, they're just a lot of fun to open and close. Um, and I don't know, I've heard all these people say that, you know, they're not fidgety. These knives aren't fidgety. They're just, that's one of the things they don't like about it. It's no, it's not on bearings. No, it doesn't have, uh, this crazy, you know, flipper action that, you know, you're going to flip it open super quick, like an automatic. No, you don't have that, but I can't explain it. I, I love as much as, and I do like my ZTs and I love my flipper action and I love my axis lock. Um, and I like to do my fidgety stuff too, but I have a button lock knife as well. That's a Medford. 
Um, love it as well, but there's just something about the simplicity of this that takes you back to the basics, but it also keeps the quality front and center. And uh, I think, I don't know how they've done it. You know, I'm newer to Chris Reeve knives, but they've done it. I mean, they've been able to keep the same quality year after year to make it truly a classic that is still considered one of the best knives in the industry, if not the best USA made knife um, out there. And uh, that's arguably, so I get that. But I personally am a fan and would say it's, it's, it's my favorite USA made knife uh, currently that I own. And, uh, and I love it. And I couldn't be more happy to have it in my collection. And my collection, like I said, is dwindling just to a few uh, Chris Reeve knives, to be honest with you. Right now I have the two Sebenza 31s, large and small, but I am hoping to sell off part of my collection to get another one because I really, really do think they're that special of a knife. And uh, if you've never had one in hand, I highly encourage you do try one uh, as they truly are something special. But uh, thanks, guys. I know I've rambled on for quite a while, but uh, do thank you for your time. If you got through this whole video, God bless you. Um, but uh, please do give me a subscribe if you made it this far and even uh, hit on the notifications because I will be putting out some more videos and a lot of it's going to be Chris Reeve Knives related if uh, that's your world. So thanks, guys. I appreciate it. All right. Signing out.